And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Today we're going to be taking a look at King of Crime, a game that's on Kickstarter currently. And this is a game, a little fast card game filler that's really simple to play and you're trying to take over different rackets on the board. King of Crime is designed by Dan Smith, the same guy who did Battle of the Bands. You might not remember this, it came out a while ago where you made up your own rock band and you could have your mother in it and different people and you're trying to have the best rock band to get the most contracts. This is a similar style game in which you're going to be playing cards with some pretty neat looking artwork. Let me show you. Let's start with the goal of the game first. In King of Crime, you are trying to control different rackets. And you can see here, we have a police, a politics racket, a vice racket, a murder racket, an extortion racket, a bootlegging racket, and a gambling racket. And you need to control either three different rackets or two of the same. So if I had two bootlegging rackets, I would win, or if I had three of the same rackets. Each racket that you control might give you some kind of combo or option or some benefit that you can use in the future. At the beginning of the game, you're going to start with your boss, Mr. Boom, Miss Bump, Mr. Bag, or Mr. Big. And these guys are going to help you. You can see that each of these can control any racket. And so that's great. You have someone who can control one of your rackets, but if you want to control more than one, you're going to need to get other people on your team. You will do that by the use of mugs. Mugs can be either thugs, or bookies or torpedoes. Each of these guys will give you a certain ability that you can use, a certain strength and possibly a special ability. Also you'll notice that these guys as well as your bosses have a number that's basically a damage number for these characters. Let me explain. On your turn you have different options that you can do. One, you can place one of these mugs in front of you. Uh, if you have for each racket that you control, you can place more than one per turn. So I might be able to place two in front of me at any point in time. These guys will stay in front of me and can be used in the future. Another action that you might have is being able to play family cards. There are different family cards and basically these are special cards. For example, I can choose a mug and play and discard them. Or draw two more cards and discard down to five. Or pull a racket from the discard pile and start, um, start a racket round. Or choose a mug from the discard pile and put them in my family. And so there are quite a few of these different cards and these can be played on your turn for uh, basically special effect as your action. Then you can start a racket round. That is where you put a racket into play and everybody is going to try to control this racket. So let's say I put into play a extortion racket. So here's the extortion racket and that's a great racket because if you control it, it will give you plus two during any murder racket round. So starting around the table, each player is allowed to play different mugs in front of them from their hand besides the mugs that they might already have in play. They're also able to use these special cards that say racket round. And so for example, choose a family and play. They have plus three to their family's value during this racket round. So I might play that one. And there's all sorts of different cards that I can play. Once everybody has played as many cards as they can or has passed, then each player is going to roll a die. Now let's say this is the die that's rolled by my opponent. They've rolled a four. I will then look at all the numbers I have on my cards. Here I have a four and it says discard. So this thug is gone. Here I have a four and this one says flip. So I turn him over. It will take me an action to unflip him to use him in future rounds. Then I will roll a die and that will be applied to everyone else's characters. So you might, in a multiplayer game, you'll have several people attacking you. Hopefully you can survive. You will then take all the numbers that you have left over and whoever is the highest controls the racket but they need somebody who can control it. This thug can't control it but this bookie can control the racket so I put him here to show that he is controlling that racket. Now of course other people are going to try to kill him because if they kill him and I have no one to control that racket then I'll lose it. There's also an action a player can take on a turn called a takeover which is kind of basically where you point to someone else's racket and you play a special racket round that's just between you and that person. 
So that's basically it. Play is going to go around the table until, like I said, one person has three rackets total or they have two rackets of the same. Also see here's a reference card that will be in the game, but there's also, if the project is funded enough, there's a little alien set. Here's bloop and plip and infected, and so there's a completely different kind of style here as you have different alien gangsters coming into play. So this is a little mini expansion that will be added. Now, some of the cards, as I always say with all prototypes that I preview, some of these cards are not final. In fact, let me show you how the cards have changed. You can see here that some of the stuff is color coded so it's really easy to see which mugs will match which rackets. It's a faster way to be able to do this and this looks like it's going to make the game easier to play. There's certainly a lot of interaction back and forth in this game as you're going to be playing cards and the, the you know before that it's a build up. You say why would I ever play a mug in front of me when I can keep my hand? Well you have a hand size limit of five cards so if you put cards in front of you you are taking the chance that they can be killed by other players using family cards or whatever but you also give yourself a bigger setup when you go because when a battle happens there's just going to be casualties everywhere especially if you're playing a multiplayer game as they roll dice so you want to have as many mugs and thugs and, and torpedoes and bookies out there so that you can, can you know win the combat to get these different rackets. There's a lot of fun. The artwork is uh, very unique. It has a very cartoony style to it and I'm if you're interested in backing this little card crime Kickstarter game, it's on Kickstarter right now. I'm about to show you the link and you can support it there. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.